Monday. I get to get back to work. This podcast is going to be a great one, ain't it, Derek? Oh, yeah. Guys, well, all right, here we go. What is going on, guys? This is the Empowered People Podcast, Tuesday Tune Up, where you know what we're going to do. We're going to focus on more stories, give less advice. I'm your host, Josh Levin, and I just want to say a special thanks, man. Each and every week, you guys tune in, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, or now on YouTube, which, check it out on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and thumbs up. Guys, and I'm just so thankful, man, the comments that we get, the subscribers that we get, the direct messages that we get. It's just so positive. And I know in this world, um, it's really easy to cut people down. It's really easy to criticize. It's really easy to make fun of um, anyone, whether they do something stupid and comical, um, like Ben Askren getting freaking laid out by the vlogger himself, Jake Paul. Um, this weekend, you can get made fun of for something silly, or you can get made fun of just whenever you try to do something ambitious, when you try to make the world a better place, when you try to get out there and do anything, people can poke fun. And it's really, it's really kind of disturbing. And so I'm so thankful that the audience here, the thousand or so of you that listen on a weekly basis, I mean, that's not what you're about. You're about improving your lives. You're about improving the lives of people around you. And I mean, I'm just so thankful for that. So guys, I, I want to jump into a story. Last week, I talked about an amazing guy, Seth Galbraith, the living legend himself and, and kind of an amazing lesson that he taught me um, while I was trying to race him on Conduit. He didn't know I was racing him. Go back and listen to that episode. It's kind of funny. It's kind of comical. But there was another guy in my life also during my apprenticeship that really had a positive impact on me. And I don't know if a lot of people would say that because he didn't really take uh, interest. He didn't really pay attention to a lot of people because a lot of people, he was just like, dude, if you're not a hard worker, I don't have time for you. And his, this guy's name is Russ Palmer. Russ Palmer is a gearhead, AKA he builds, you know, custom, uh, trucks. He builds custom cars. He takes freaking these old rusty piece of crap looking things, dude. And they're the most beautiful hot rods you've ever seen in your life. And he's also an electrician. The, the dude is just a brainiac. I kind of, I called Seth Galbraith the legend. I would always call Russ Palmer MacGyver because it just seemed like all the tools, all the knowledge, he could take anything and get the job done. He was just an amazing dude. And when I showed up on, on his job site the very first time, it was Clayview or Clay Terrace Country Club. It was this country club with a big indoor tennis court, big outdoor pool. I had no idea what I was doing. I remember I rolled my ankle in the freaking pool so bad. I just like laid there and cried for like 30 minutes. Like I was a little kid all over again, dude. Rolling your ankle, rolling your ankle or getting the wind knocked out of you immediately makes you six years old. You're like, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> like it just sucks so bad, right? So, but while I was on that job site, um, I remember I didn't know a lot and he was kind of lining me out on a, in, in a pump pump room about hanging disconnects and he ran off to do something else and I didn't really know what I was doing but I kind of remembered what he had said and so I'm like trying what I know how to do man I'm starting with what I know right and I'm hanging these disconnects and I get the third one mounted and he busts in and he's like Josh what are you doing and I was like well you told me to hang these disconnects to make sure they're level to put them right here six inches apart all this stuff and he's like man, I totally thought you were just going to be standing around here on your phone doing absolutely nothing like every other loser on this job site. And if you know him, dude, he talks just like that. He's kind of got this like borderline yell at all times. Like, what are you doing? You son of a, you know, kind of, kind of attitude. Right. And so that's what I, he didn't catch me not working. He kept, he caught me freaking installing these, uh, these disconnects. So anyway, so I, I, I'm getting done and he comes back and he's laying in the wires. Cause I don't really know what, what, what we're doing there. And I go, Hey Russ, man, I gotta, I gotta take a leak. Can I go to the bathroom? And he's like, absolutely. You know, you've earned it. <laughs> and so I go to walk out the door and he's like, what in the hell are you doing? And I'm like, uh, I'm going to the bathroom. And he goes, don't you ever, ever waste a trip. Pick up that box of trash and get out of here. And that phrase, don't ever, ever waste a trip, stuck in my brain. I'd probably been an electrician three or four months, but not wasting a trip is such an impactful lesson. I kind of want to unpack it for a second because I think a lot of people, when they go, man, I'm not getting the promotions I want. I'm not climbing the ladder like I want. I'm not catching the, the attention of my boss like I want. I'm not getting where I want. It's not because of a lack of effort. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's not because you're not skilled skilled enough. It's, I honestly think you're wasting a lot of trips and trip number one, 
for me in that situation was going to the bathroom. And I think that you're, so I'm going to talk very construction like right now. Okay. You're going to have to do the hard work of thinking for yourself and applying it to your specific industry. But when you're on a job site, there is a specific porta potty. It's usually in one location. It's always on the freaking wrong side of the job site, but it is easy whenever you have to go to the bathroom to disconnect from your work life. And so most guys, when they have to go to the bathroom, they take off their tool belts, they drop them on the ground, they start walking kind of moseying along and they get on their phones, right? And they're checking Instagram and they're checking Twitter and they're freaking calling their girlfriend and they're doing this and they're texting and they're doing all this stuff. They've disconnected from the day-to-day -day work. And Russ was like, yo man, if you think that the boss, if you think that the people in authority, if you think the decision makers don't see you disconnecting from work by dropping your tool bags and pulling out your phone, you, you, you're, you're wasting a trip. You're setting yourself up for failure. Instead, keep your phone in your pocket, keep your tools on your waist, and think about what can you carry. So there's always trash on a job site. There's always scraps of wire, there's scraps of conduit, there's boxes to get broke down. And before I walked out of that pump room at that clubhouse, he said, break down all those boxes, put them in all those boxes, carry those boxes of trash with you to the porta potty. You're going to pass the dumpster. So think ahead, think about the next step. Don't disconnect, be present. The second thing he said is, when you get to the porta potty, what are you going to do? And I'm like, dude, what is this guy asking me? Am I going to go number one or number two? And he's like, that's not what I'm asking you, dummy. He's like, what I'm saying is, do we need more conduit? And I said, yeah, I think we do. And he goes, so when you come back, bring two bundles of three quarter inch pipe. We're going to need that to pipe all this stuff together. Well, where, 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 where's the conduit at? It's right behind the porta potty, dummy. So I go out to the porta potty, right? I'm wearing my tools. I'm not on my phone. I got my hands filled with the box of trash. I throw it in the dumpster, go in the porta potty, take a leak, right? Get out, hand sanitize, pre COVID, still hand sanitizer in those nasty porta potties. But I carried a bundle of pipe back with me, right? And to everyone looking, Am I, am I disconnected or am I working? To everyone that's paying attention, man, I am working. I'm taking out trash. I am bringing, about, bringing back conduit. And I think a lot of times, so when we're going somewhere, it's easy to disconnect. And when we're coming back, we never think, what can I bring? Now, this is a silly thing, but dude, if you go to your boss's birthday party, bring him a gift right? If you go to somebody's house, bring them a housewarming present. If you go to a picnic, don't just show up with chips. Ask what you can bring, not only for yourself, but for people around you, right? And so Russ said, hey, don't waste the trip out there and don't waste the trip back. Don't jump on your phone. Don't lollygag around. Pay attention to what's going on. The last thing he said is, hey man, always remember you need to walk with a purpose. Okay, so don't waste a trip. Don't waste a trip coming back and walk with a purpose. And this is why I always talk about, I always wore my tools, even not only to the porta potty, but in the porta potty. I always had my tools on because whether you realize it or not, or whether you want to accept it or not, perception is reality. And when you walk out of your office and you walk by all these cubicles and you go and grab a banana from the snack bar and you get on your phone while you're going to the bathroom and you walk by all these people working, right? That's the key thing. When you're walking to the porta potty, when you're walking to the thing, when you're meandering around, I think that's a word, right? Meandering, everybody else you pass is working. And when you are working hard and you're sweating and you're getting after it and you see somebody lollygag around, does that make you happy? Does that make you like them? Or does it make you no matter what be like, yo dude, what are you doing? Pick up the pace, walk with some purpose, get after it. So it's like right now, okay, you can all start to think, what can you do to set yourself apart, okay? Number one, keep your gosh darn phone in your pocket. I am telling you right now, the biggest hindrance to your raise and to your promotion and to your, your long-term achievement, even myself, is keeping your phone in your pocket, okay? Number two is thinking about the next step, thinking about what does people, what do people need rather than engaging with your phone and liking tweets and follows and all this kind of crap saying, yo, Derek, hey, I'm going to the bathroom. You need a drink? You want me to grab you a coffee on the way back? Hey, Russ, I'm going to the porta potty. Do we need any more conduit? While you're walking, hey man, I see you, I see you guys pulling wire. Do you need a hand? Can I help you? Engaging with people, not checking out, not wasting a trip is so extremely important. And just always remember, dude, like wearing your tools means you're ready. It means at the drop of the hat, 
after the porta potty, if somebody was like, yo, I need, I need your help right now. I wouldn't have to go back and get prepared and get my stuff and show up, be prepared. It made me think of this guy very unconstruction related, but it's a guy named uh, Wes Greenblatt. He was our valedictorian at Kearney High School in 2003. Brainiac, bro. Every single class, we had seven classes, right? We had like weightlifting. He never took weightlifting. He probably never took a study hall either, dude. He was in calculus three as a senior in high school. He's a brilliant guy. That dude had a backpack filled with notebooks and he always carried every single book to every single class. Why? Because he was prepared because he was ready. He didn't need no, he didn't need to go to his locker. He didn't need to go to the water fountain. Like that dude was going from class one to class two to class three. And guess what? If in class three, there was a break and he needs to work on class six homework, he already had his book. That dude was prepared. And if you wonder at all why you are not catching the attention of your supervisors, if you are not getting the opportunities to run projects or get raises or like advance as high as you think you should go, I think it's not because you're not skilled. It's not because you're dumb. It's not because that you're not going to eventually get there. I just think you're wasting a lot of trips. You're not thinking about the next step. You're not thinking about how to help the people around you. And when people see you, they don't see a man on a mission. They see someone that's just kind of coasting through the day. And that crap has got to stop. Hey, shine like, go. They don't want story, man. They want to sound like, I'm like, no. Look around like, they see you on the mountain. They don't see you on the climb.